What is up YouTube? It is your boy Joker850X and today I want to give you guys a review on Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Now here is the thing. I never I've never really did a game review, so to speak, or a review in general, like a thorough one. So this one's actually gonna be a kind of a short one. And I'm gonna point out my pros and cons with the game and you know overall some things I would like to see that wasn't exactly in the game. Um now first and foremost. I am not paid by anyone to make these videos. I am, I am not paid by anyone to do reviews. I'm not paid by anyone to do anything I do on my channel. So to avoid anything like that, none of that happens. Um, and on my previous videos, I have two videos that both got past 2,000 views. I had someone actually ask me, did I hack my views or whatever? And my answer to that was no. I simply shared a video that I found would be helpful to other players on a commonly used form, and I guess other people shared it as well, which helped it reach out to so many people. And it was actually shocking to me to wake up one morning to see that I had 2,000 views on a video that I had posted a day ago. That was mind blowing, and that made me very happy. Now, a lot of people asked me, um, they was asking me questions about the video because I guess I didn't go over what I was doing thoroughly. If it helps, I will make another video on that. But enough of that for now. We're going to get into this game review. Now, step one. I mean, problem one. We're going to go over our cons first. We're going to go from bad to good. Con number one. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 is lacking in a few major players. Now, I'm not sure about most people, but I love Super Boo. I love Semi Perfect Cell. I love Oob. I love Super Baby. And they are all missing from this roster. And I'm not understanding the reason why. I mean, if you're not going to give us semi perfect cell, what's the point of giving us um, imperfect cell? And, and it's just, to me, that, that's just me. You have Oob's clothes in the game, but we don't have Oob as an actual player. What's the point? I mean, I made my human character actually look like Maju because I like Maju so much, but that's just me. Um, that it's, it's not a major thing, but it, it's just one of those things that like, I barely play as uh, the, any character from the game roster itself. I prefer to use my character, but my whole thing is, if I'm gonna play as a character, I would love to play as my favorite characters. Um, Buhan being one of them, I don't really care about Pickaboo, I guess you can call him, or Bukalo or Boo Tanks. I don't care about those guys too much, but I did like how diverse um, Boo Tanks' skill set was in the show. So I would I would have liked to see that. And I mean, for Christ's sakes, he damn near beat the fuck out of um, Ultimate Gohan. So that that says a lot. Well, nah, he was getting murked pretty bad. Yeah, he he was getting handed. He got his ass handed to him. But it was still unique to see that Boo was using Gotenks moves. And I thought it was cool and kind of funny. It's kind of gimmicky in my, point, in my opinion. But whatever the case may be. I liked it. And um, who else? Um, Super Baby Vegeta. Now, I don't care too much for this character in terms of playing as him. But I know it, it's kind of stupid in my opinion to have... You have the uh, Nova Shenron and East Shen S East whatever the blue motherfucker the blue Shenron Nova's twin brother. You have both of them, and then you have Omega Shenron, but you don't have Super Baby Vegeta. Oh, and you have Super Seventeen, but no Super Baby G ba Super Baby Vegeta. I just don't see a point in that, and it's kind of like. Why? You have his clothes in the games, but you don't have him in the game. And you have these other guys from GT who didn't even last as long as he did. And so with that being said, it's kind of like, why? Why Why are you? Why is he not here? But on to number two. Number two. Oh, my Lord. Player match battles. Now, me personally, I thought they would have fixed this, but I guess they did in a sense because if you do an endless battle, you don't have to worry about a three-minute limitation. Um... Honestly, I would have been happy if they would have bumped up player match battles or endless bat I mean not endless rank battles to just five minutes. That gives you a, a two minutes more to do whatever you're gonna do and play more strategic instead of just bomb rushing your opponent, stamina breaking, bomb rushing, stamina breaking, bomb rushing, stamina breaking. It it adds it gives you more time to be more dynamic with your playstyle. 
But three minutes, believe it or not, is a very tight gap to fill a fight within. I mean, look at Dragon Ball Z. Those fights last fucking forever. 15 minutes is far too long for a player match battle unless you're, like, training with somebody or, or just, you know, fucking around with someone. And it's a, a match between you and a friend or whatever. But a player match against a random, I feel like five minutes would have been more than enough time to get that under the way, to get all fancy and have fun with it. But with three minutes, you're at a, a limitation. And I told my friends in the past that they had actually fixed this problem, but they sadly did not. But like I said, there was a way around it with endless battles. And I mean, I guess that suffice for most people because I haven't seen many others complain about this. Con number three. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like they put too much, how can I put this? They made stamina too much of a, 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 a tool and a deficit, so to speak. I felt like it should it should have been more balanced. Um, maybe like it takes away like less stamina when you uh press, like you, you get out of a combo or whatever, but a lot of people don't, how can I put this? They don't play the game competitively. They play it casually. And if you go into an online match or, or whatever the case may be, and you have this guy that's just like, oh, I'm a stamina whore. I stacked up on stamina so I can never lose. Or I stacked up on health so I can never lose. Okay, cool. I have nothing against that. But then you limit the players who don't really know much about bills and they're just going with, oh, I want my guy to be balanced. Oh, I want my guy to, to have strong punches. This, that, and the third. And this person may not know how to back hit or may not know how to um, Z vanish or perfect block, whatever the case may be in defensive tactics. He may not know how to do all that. And so that puts that person at a limitation. He or she puts them at a limitation to the point where it's like, oh my God, I'm getting my butt whooped. Tap A. Boom, you're out of a combo. But guess what? The person you're fighting against who has 10,000 years of stamina back hits you, smacks you, and keeps it pushing because he has butt tons of stamina. So if you do manage to combo him into something, there's not much you can do because he can get out of it. Meanwhile, if you get out of it, you're kind of trapping yourself, so to speak. So I feel like they made that a really dangerous thing. But I like the fact that they added a stamina bar because... Xenoverse 1 kind of got a, it, it, it got old really fast. Um, for as competitive fighting, I guess you could say. Um, let's see. Fourth. Fourth con. There's only, there's not a lot of cons to this game for me. The last con is going to be the servers. Now, here's my problem with the servers. Me personally, because I'm an Xbox player, I don't know if it's just because there's not a lot of players playing it on Xbox or whatever it is. But if you go into a multi-lobby, nine times out of ten, you're going to see a lot of players there. You'll see a lot of players at the different um, desks and whatnot for parallel quests online or online battles, whatever the case may be. And here you are trying to get into one of these things. But for some reason, you can't find anyone. Now, to, I'm, I'm kind of like, okay, there's plenty of people here. I see them like I, I I see them they're right here it's a fuck ton of them they're even in my way but for some reason I can't find a match that's kind of odd um I don't I don't know if that's a server issue or a game issue or a region issue I don't know what the case is on that but if they could fix that that honestly would make this game so much more better and honestly that's like my biggest con with the game I can deal with a few characters missing cool whatever I can deal with um, the time limitations. Cool, whatever. I can deal with the stamina thing. Cool, whatever. But my problem is the fact that when I want to play the game, I can never find a match. I can never find a, a parallel quest with other people. And it's 2016. Everything is internet related. Maybe, maybe you're a loner. Maybe you have friends or whatever the case may be. And you're just trying to find one more person to help you out on a mission. You can't find it because for some reason the servers won't connect you with other players. And when you do, it's kind of like, God damn, I done did this like 30 times and I'm finally connected. I don't even want to play the game anymore. And honestly, I've that, that has happened to me plenty of times. So with that being said, that is honestly the biggest problem I have with Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Now, on to the pros. And I think I have about six of those. 
Pro number one. The fighting is so much more fluent and smooth compared to Xenoverse 1. I love fighting in this game. Be it against a computer or be it against an opponent. It feels so much more smooth. It just feels smoother. It's not as clunky as it was. Don't get me wrong. Xenoverse 1 had excellent fighting, but... Xenoverse 2, it kind of beats it, and it could because it could be because it's a full 60 frame game. I believe, if I remember correctly, I believe it's full 60 frames, and that could that could have something to do with it. Well, it probably does have something to do with it, or the fact that they 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 just smooth out the rough edges for the fighting, so to speak. Pro number two. Oh my lord! Let's talk about perfect guards or well, perfect blocks and z vanishing and and how they just added a bit more strategy to the game than your basic block wait for your opponent combo to end and try to attack uh tactic which was pretty much the whole basis of xenoverse one or go super saiyan and spam an attack <sighs> thankfully that's no longer the case what is this card doing thankfully that's no longer the case but I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm really happy with the fact that they actually changed this. You can't be a Saiyan and just doo-doo on every other race because you're the only one with an ultimate transformation, so to speak. I'm really happy about that. It was annoying. I didn't even want to be another race because you could not transform. And I mean, in Xenoverse 2, the transformations aren't all extravagant, but every race has their own unique transformation, which adds something, a different element to the game. And my favorite character has to be my Majin. Like, he's already short and fat, and I don't mind transforming, transforming into Kid Boo. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. It's like, okay, my character goes from being this 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 happy, jolly, fat little pinto bean looking guy to this angry, evil, mindless, crazy little freak that just deals damage. And I'm fine with that. I am fine with that 100 percent Same thing with Namekians. You you have my my Namekian. He looks like a humble warrior who's been through some things. And then when he transforms, he's this giant wreaking havoc. I have no problem with that. That is cool. Um, uh, what other races there? Humans. I just recently got my human transformation. I haven't used it much, but I like it. The Nimbus Cloud is unique. What what other kind of transformation could you have hoped for a human? There isn't much a human can do, honestly, and they haven't transformed any in the show. So to automatically, I guess you can say, make all humans pure in a sense, I'm fine with that. Humans can transform. Well, they don't transform. They get a Nimbus Cloud and they get the Power Pole. Two things from everybody's childhood memory from Dragon Ball. He got the Nimbus Cloud, Power Pole, and guess what? The Power Pole extends. And on top of that, you actually have power pole combos in the game, well, skills in the game that you can use, and I guess you can add another depth to your character, and you can even get the power pole as a um, as an accessory item. So it, it looks cool. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, last but not least, we're gonna no, no, I forgot about Frieza and saying Free right, Frieza Clan and saying Frieza Clan characters. Now Frieza Clan characters have gold golden and what that pretty much does it pretty much from what i noticed it boosts your key damage and my free user race character is a key character anyway so once i go golden he's kind of i guess you can say god tier in my opinion he's like a glass cannon if i can trap you in a beam attack or emperor's death beam you may as well call it quits because you're you're pretty much screwed i'm gonna deal like tops amount of damage to you and there isn't going to be much you can do and with the Frieza clan actually having the um having the freeze uh freeze blast still where you um your charge key blast it freezes your opponent this is very useful and very dangerous for my opponents and I'm very happy with that but lastly let's go on to the Saiyans boy for the life of me, I cannot understand why Saiyans have so many transformations. I have no problem with it. But, uh, what is it? Four? You have Super Saiyan, uh, Super Vegeta, um, Future Super Saiyan, 
And I think there's another Super Saiyan transformation. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but that's three. Humans have three transformations versus other characters having one race unique transformations. Transformation. Now, mind you, I do like the fact that they made unlock potential easier to unlock. You don't have to reach max level to get it because I didn't unlock it in the first game. So I didn't know how it was in the first game. But in this game, as soon as I figure out how to get unlock potential, I went and did it. And to do it, I think it's fairly fair. You have to pass all your class assessments. Then after that, you have to make sure you got a, at least a Z on most of them. At least I did that. I did not get a Z on the final one. And and I still unlocked it. But I have four Zs total and then I have a single A. Which I'm... Hey, apparently the game's fine with it. So I'm fine with it too. And I'm definitely not going to complain. Now, my problem... Well, no, I don't have a problem with it. I take that back. I have no problems with that. And Kaioken, it's very easy to unlock. You just, it's its its a parallel quest mission and you unlock it from that. I have no problem with that. Simple. It's a skill that every race can use. Same thing with unlock potential. It's a uh, potential unleash. It's a skill that every race can use and they're fair and balanced. Now, Kaioken's a bit more dangerous, but that's all up to you and your play style. Depending on how you play, depends on how how poisonous this technique is for you and i like it so overall transformations i love them that's pro number two. Oh god i'm only on number two pro number three <clears throat> pro number three is gonna have to be the fact that they added more defensive ways more ways to be defensive in this game um number one perfect blocking and i know i started talking about this um and pro number two, and then I went over to something else. But number one is going to be um, perfect blocking. Number two is going to be uh, guard breaking. Number three is going to be Z vanishing. And number four, er, there's no number four. But those three alone, they change the dynamics of people's play style because you have to think. You have to be able to read your opponent so to speak and i know in more tactical fighting games people read their opponents all the time like i've watched my friends play super smash bros i'm no good at the game but i see how they play i see how they fake each other out i see how they read each other i see how they feel for each other and in xenoverse 2 i can do that with z vanishing now am i comparing this to a a top-notch fighter that people know no i'm not doing that but i am adding the 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 point that Xenoverse is upgrading their play. They're upgrading their style, their game style. They want to be, they could be a competitor for actual competitive fighting games. In my opinion, if they added a few more things. Now, I'm I'm not going to talk about the things they can add in this video because this is my pros portion of the video. So, like I was saying, I, I would, I honestly will play Xenoverse 2 competitive. If they had a bracket for it, I would do it. And for the simple fact, I feel like it can uh, contend with some of the best fighting games out there, in my opinion. In every game, I don't care how simple it may seem, it has some kind of strategy to it. There are tactics to it that make it a lot deeper than what appears on the surface. And a lot of people will be like, oh, that's an anime fighting game, dude. How, How deep can it be? You'd be surprised. Let me fight someone who hasn't played this game at all and who hasn't been on this game for very long my knowledge my tactics and my scrap and my skills would be vastly above theirs and i'd have a huge advantage because i know how to play the game and i've been on it enough to know the different things that benefit me and that um pretty much screws me over so to speak I know not to constantly tap the A button when someone's beating me up. Because once I'm out of stamina, I'm pretty much screwed, honestly. So I I know this much. And someone who doesn't play the game as much would not. Someone who doesn't play the game at all would not know that. And if you got a bunch of um, competitive fighters, all play fighting games, I'm pretty sure they would pick up on things really quick because like i said they they play competitive games so they know what to look for and they know what kind of um strategies and and things they use to get a feel for their opponent like 
in um is it street fighter no it's not street fighter um smash bros i have a buddy that uh what is it roll dashing dash rolling i can't remember i'm not uh, a smash brother player or whatever like that but i've played it and i'm garbage at it but um dash canceling something like that it's something where they roll and they, they roll back and forth and they guard in the midst of it it, it looks cool. It looks dope. And it seems like a way of filling out your opponent. Uh, wave dashing. That's what it's called. Wave dashing. And it's a way of getting a feel for your opponent. Now, I'm, cut, I'm this video is getting kind of long. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut it short here. And end it with probably my uh, last pro. And my overall review on the game. Final Pro, they've fixed every problem that was in Xenoverse 1. Well, all of the problems I had, at least. The the clunky kind of feeling when it came to online battles. The, um, the annoyance of Saiyans and their Super Saiyan spamming. Um, and the overall fact that they listen to the community that alone that alone is enough for me but overall if i had to rate xenoverse um for gameplay uh enjoyability and replay value because the replay value for me isn't super high i'd give it a seven and that's fair and me being a dragon ball z fanboy most would assume my rating would be higher but I'd give the game a 7 because the replay value isn't as high. And <clears throat> unless you're a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, I wouldn't recommend it. Unless you're into games where you can create your own character. Then I recommend it because that is fun and very unique. And the character creations are very dynamic and diverse. So that alone is enough for me. And like I said, I'm not paid for this video or I'm not sponsored to do these videos. But if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button, comment, tell me what you think. And as always, it is your boy, Joker850X, and we are out. Peace.